I found a huge problem with the Anchor Solix C1000 while filming this video. And this one problem is enough for me to never recommend buying this power station ever again. And it's not just because I have the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus here. I was gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison showdown of the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus, the Anchor Solix C1000 and the DJI Power 1000. But in one of the tests that I was running, I wanted to do an overload test where I basically put too much power through all these things. I started with the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus. I threw the Delta 3 Plus into X-Boost mode to handle the higher output, where it can continuously serve up to 2600 watts. I would like to mention that in the app it recommends you only attach one device to the Delta 3 Plus when you're running it in X-Boost mode. So I have two 1500 watt kettles. When I turn one on, it draws exactly 1500 watts, and when I turn both of them on, it draws two kilowatts while in X-Boost mode. I assume there's a voltage drop or something occurring across the circuit that reduces the draw from both kettles to one kilowatt each or something. That's fine, I'm not really sure how it works, but it is working to power both kettles at the same time, which is highly impressive. And while in X-Boost mode, it can go up to 2600 watts. As soon as I switched off X-Boost mode, I hit the overload condition as I expected, because normally it's only rated for 1800 watts, and this is two 1500 watt kettles. But once I hit that overload condition, all I had to do was cycle the power for a few seconds, and then everything was back to normal. Then I tried this test on the Anchor Solix C1000. I was always impressed by the C1000's output ever since I got it, before today. So I started the test and one kettle draws 1500 watts two kettles and boom, we immediately hit our overload condition as expected. But that's not the end of it. I tried resetting it by holding the power button. I tried plugging it in. I tried plugging it in while holding the power button. I tried the factory reset button while it was plugged in, while it was not plugged in, and all while holding the power button. Every combination of buttons that I could push. And this thing is totally bricked. It will not start anymore. And I can totally imagine someone buying a power station and taking it camping for their like friends or family to use. And then someone turns on a kettle and like a toaster at the same time to make breakfast. And they don't know the specs of your power station. They just want to turn it on and they probably think it's magic. Anyways, boom. That's basically the same thing that I just did. Instead of a toaster, it was just two kettles. But instead of just being able to cycle the power and then get everything back and running again, you're out of $600 power station, it's broken, and you don't have any power or any breakfast. I don't really care if customer service offers to replace the whole thing for free. This is something that shouldn't ever be a problem in the first place if the proper safety features are installed and working as expected. And then I looked online to see if anyone else had similar issues, and they do. Some people have had the C1000 dead on arrival. Some people have had similar issues with their power station bricking and not getting a lot of support from Anchor. I am going to reach out to them and see if I can get this resolved, but right now I'm not hopeful. It also just so happens that a few weeks ago I reviewed the DJI Power 1000 and it has more AC output and solar input than the Anchor C1000 and more USB power output. So instead of even including the Anchor C1000 in this comparison, it's just going to be the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus versus the DJI Power 1000. These are both 1024 watt hour capacity batteries, so they can power a 100 watt appliance for about about 10 hours or a 500 watt appliance for about two hours each before needing to recharge. And they both have LFP batteries that say they'll last 4,000 cycles. So that means both of these power stations could be completely depleted and recharged every single day for 10 years. Also, I would like to mention that this video is sponsored by EcoFlow. They sent out the Delta 3 Plus and made this video possible. But all the opinions expressed in this video are my own. So it seems almost obvious that the first test that I need to do is the overload test with the two kettles on the DJI Power 1000 to see if it can handle it too, because I haven't done that test on it yet. It is rated at 2200 watts of continuous output, and it isn't able to do any voltage drop magic like X-Boost. So if we're plugging in two 1500 watt kettles, it should try to draw 3000 watts and also immediately hit that overload condition. I am a little nervous to do this test after we just bricked the C1000, but here we go. Yeah, see, that's what should happen. 
So the DJI Power 1000 doesn't immediately brick when you try to overload it. I'm glad it passed the test, but this was a great example of how to use the EcoFlow with XBoost. Because of XBoost, the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus is the only power station in the group that can power two kettles at the same time. So it cannot perform DJI while using XBoost, even though DJI is rated for 2200 watts of continuous output, a whole 400 watts higher than the EcoFlow without XBoost. And beyond having six AC outlets with the EcoFlow and only two on DJI, you've also got a DC output on the EcoFlow with two barrel plugs and a 12 volt car port, which are completely absent from DJI's power station. And as for USB output, both the DJI Power 1000 and the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus have two 140 watt USB-C charging ports. DJI has two 24 watt USB-A charging ports and EcoFlow has two 36 watt USB-A ports. That's actually another difference between the Delta 3 and the Delta 3 Plus. The Delta 3 Not Plus only has 100 watt USB-C ports and 18 watt USB-A ports. On top of that, the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus can also function as an uninterruptible power supply with less than 10 milliseconds of switchover time. And it can support network attached storage devices and other sensitive equipment. The UPS feature is one of those extra features that EcoFlow has that you will still need to download the EcoFlow app first in order to enable. And if you want to properly support a NAS server, you will need to download and install software from EcoFlow onto your server in order to do so. I don't actually have a NAS server, so I can't really show you how to do that, but it is an option. On the other hand, DJI doesn't have any documentation or mention anything about functioning as a UPS, so I wouldn't recommend trying to use it for that. One of the most important things on these small power stations is their ability to charge with solar. If you plan on only using it when the power is out, being able to charge it with the sun for free is really only useful if you can charge it at a reasonable speed. DJI surprised me when they had 800 watts of solar input, but the way they got there was a little bit less than ideal. They shipped the unit with one MPPT controller and you can only plug in a maximum of 400 watts into each MPPT controller. And you can only use panels that go up to 30 volts each. If you wanna get a second MPPT controller to use both ports, that's gonna cost you an extra 60 bucks. And if you want to leave both controllers plugged in all the time, only one of them will actually attach to the DJI Power 1000 and the other one will just dangle off to the side. It works, but it seems like it was only an afterthought and only being able to use panels with up to 30 volts really limits your options. The Delta 3 Plus, on the other hand, has two XT60 inputs and they both accept 11 to 60 volts and up to 500 watts. So you can pump one kilowatt of solar into the Delta 3 Plus and there's no weird adapter to plug in or screw into it. It's all built in the way it should be. This is another one of the key differences between the Delta 3 and the Delta 3 Plus. The Delta 3 Plus has two 500 watt solar inputs while the Delta 3 only has one. But if you're only charging with AC power, all you have to do is flip this little switch to make the DJI Power 1000 charge at 1200 watts. But the Delta 3 Plus wins again. It can charge at 1500 watts and go from 0% to 100% in under an hour. You can also charge it with solar and AC at the same time, but the maximum rate of charge is 1500 watts. EcoFlow also has a great app that you can use to modify settings or control and monitor your power station remotely over Wi-Fi. I like the way EcoFlow has built their app. I think it's extremely useful and they offer a great user experience, but none of the important features are gated behind that app download. On the other hand, DJI does not have any Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or any kind of connected features at all. Anchor's C1000 forces you to download their app, open it, log in and connect every single time you wanna activate fast charging, which is infuriating and another one of the reasons why I wouldn't recommend it. When it comes to powering stuff and sound level, the EcoFlow is imperceptible below 600 watts with less than 30 decibels and less than 40 decibels when you're powering stuff below 1200 watts. I don't have a decibel meter to test that, but I do have ears, so let's give it a go. Noise test. That is my house air conditioner we're hearing right now, not the EcoFlow. Here we go. At 1800 watts, this is what it sounds like. Let's do the same test for DJI. There we go.
DJI was quite a bit noisier than EcoFlow at around 1800 watts, but around 1200 watts or lower, both of them were extremely silent. So for under 1200 watts, I'm gonna give it a tie. Above 1200 watts, I'm gonna go with EcoFlow. So that covers most of the objective comparison between these two power stations. When it comes down to fit and finish though, the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus simply is a prettier piece of tech to look at. It's more well thought out, more refined, and has gone through many iterations and is part of their main product line. The DJI Power 1000 doesn't look bad, but it does look like it was built with a specific purpose in mind, and then things were added after design was already agreed on. So now we're left with this thing that does a really decent job on paper, but is kind of a hassle to explain. Like why aren't there screw holes on the other side so you can attach the second MPPT controller that you will have to buy if you want to get the most solar input? And why are the cables so short on those things? And why are these MPPT controllers only accepting 30 volt panels? And why is there an MPPT controller at all? Why isn't it just built in like every other power station on the market? And why are we using SDC light connectors for these things? I've never even heard of that in this industry. You know, it's a good power station functionally. The DJI Power 1000 is advertised at $999 and it's currently discounted to $699. And the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus is advertised at $799, but the pre-order price of $650 should last until October 25th, according to EcoFlow at the time I recorded this video. And there's a 5% discount code I've got in the description of this video that you can stack on top of that. So it should be around $620. All that to say is they are in a pretty similar price range, but you can currently get the EcoFlow for less money. So price point goes to EcoFlow. If you want to grab the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus, there's a link to where you can get it in the description of this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.